In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I've automated opening and closing my garage roller door. Because the problem is I can never find my little key fob thing because either it's on someone's keys and they've taken it out or it's somewhere in the house and I can't find it. So I'm going to automate opening and closing of the garage door using Home Assistant um, and also a relay from Shelly. So if that's something that might be of use to you, then stick around and watch the video. Hi, my name's Paul, welcome to Project Smart Home. So as I said in the intro, I want to automate my garage roller door because I can never find my little key fob thing. Um, it's never to be find in, found in the house or someone's taken it out with them. Um, so I'm gonna be using uh, a Shelly relay, which hopefully I can show up on the screen here, along with Home Assistant to be able to automate opening and closing that, or at least give me the ability within Home Assistant so I can open and close the uh, close the door without having to f hunt, the, hunt around the house to find this key fob. So I'll take you through this Shelly device that I'm going to be using in some more detail. It's essentially got the capability to um, use the motor connection settings on it. So we have a feed going into the relay and a feed going out to the to the motor, and that'll control the up and down. Um, so I'll take you through that. I'll take you through um, some visuals in the garage so you can see the roller door and see the type of device that I'm configuring. So hopefully that will make sense. And then I'll go through um, adding the Shelly device into Home Assistant and adding it into the dashboard. And then what I'm hoping to do as well, if I've got time, is give a little bit of a demonstration of... Um, using a tile, um, a locator, tile locating device that's on my son's bike. So when he gets home, I always want him to put his bike in the garage so it's locked away safely. So what I'm hoping to show you is when that bike arrives at home, tile will detect um, with home, within Home Assistant that the bike's arrived home because I've got a tile device attached to the bike. So when that arrives home, the garage doors will open automatically and he'll be able to put his bike away. Um, so hopefully that's going to be uh, of use to you and let's get into it now. Thanks for watching. So what I'll do is I'll take you through what's inside the box and then we'll follow up with some wiring, wiring diagrams. Um, so as I said in the intro I've got the Shelly 2PM so this is capable of um, essentially controlling a motor with a um, up and down function or forward and backwards uh, which I'll show you on the Shelly device shortly and then I'll show you the wi wiring diagram I've created. Um, so going from left to right then we've got the neutral, permanent neutral for the device itself. Zero 01 and zero 02 are to be connected to the motor on the roller itself um, and then you've got live terminal in the middle and S1 and S2, which are the control feeds from the existing device. So they'll, the feed from the device that's in place will feed through the Shelly, through the Shelly even, and then be switched through to the motor. Hopefully that'll make more sense in a minute. There is a wiring diagram in the box, um, so it'll tell you exactly what needs to be done. As I say, I'm using this for uh, a garage roller door, but it could be used for other things. Um, hopefully that was useful. I'll move on to the next section. So I'll just take you through my wiring diagram then. So we've got the neutral, as I mentioned on the previous one, 0, 01 and zero 02, as I said, connect to the roller, directly to the roller, so a cable going straight to the roller. We need permanent, live and neutral for the Shelly device. And then S1 and S2, in my situation are connecting back into the controls and that controls the up and down of the motor that controls the roller door. And on mine, it needs an earth and a neutral that I guess gets fed through to the, um, to the roller as well. And then the controller also needs a live neutral and earth in the bottom right hand corner on the right hand side. 
Um, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, obviously, you need to check your own manufacturer's um, wiring diagrams just to see how that's going to work. But essentially, I would imagine it's going to have two feeds, one for up and one for down, controlling the, the roller door. Um, but if you need help, then make sure you get a competent person to help you because this is working with live electrics. So don't do this if you don't know what you're doing. Okay, hopefully that was useful. Thanks. So let's have a look at what I'm working with before we start then. So that black box on the wall there is the existing controls. Um, there's obviously the infrared key that I can use as well, um, but there's control buttons on the side of the where to on the side of the box to do it manually. Um, that will control up and down, and then that's the switched fuse spur that would isolate that unit. So just a quick look of what it looks like beforehand. So I've isolated the switch fuse spur, um, so the cable's going up into the motor are no longer live, and the, there's no live cables going into my control. So I've taken the lid off, as you can see there, um, and inside the unit, you can see in the center there, there's the live, which is brown, blue, neutral, and earth, which is the yellow and green wire in the middle, two, three terminals. And then on the left where my fingers are, the black and the brown I've identified are the controlling the motor, up and down on the motor, and then green earth, blue neutral. And then there's um, some sort of link up with those brown and blue on the bottom. So where my fingers are drawing, my hand is, that's where I'm going to have the box where I'm going to put all the wiring and the shelly into. So the wires will go in to my new box, terminate into the shelly, and then also feed up into the controls. So I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. So I've now wired it all up, the shelly's connected in, um, it was pretty straightforward. Um, as you can see there, I won't talk you through the connections again because I've done that a few times, but essentially there's a few Wago blocks in there that are holding the neutral live and earth cables that are feeding both the Shelly and the control panel on the wall there. So I'll now kind of get it all sealed up, switch it on and give it some testing. So there it is all sealed up. It's a IP55 rated box, so it should be fine in the garage anyway from a waterproof point of view. So I'll, I've turned the electrics back on, turn the switch fuse spur back on and there's power to the control device. So I'm now just gonna test and make sure that the existing controls still work because that would be disastrous if that didn't work. So they're working fine. Um, those controls are passing through the Shelly and going through to the, um, to the motor. So that part is working. So what I need to do now is Add the Shelly, so yeah, add the Shelly into my app, and then we can configure it and set it up in there, and then we'll add it into Home Assistant. So what we'll do then is we'll add the Shelly device into the app. So when I've logged in to the Shelly app on my phone, it's automatically detected it. And what I did, uh, I needed to make sure that my phone was on the same Wi-Fi network as my device I want to connect to. So I've got an IoT network, so I've just added the device in there. So you need to put in your Wi-Fi name, Wi-Fi password, and then it will go through the setup process. And then here I'm just giving it a name and adding it to the room that I want that device to be located in. So pretty straightforward setup process. Um, and what I'm going to do now is just go through adding the or updating the firmware. So if you've seen any of my previous videos, I always like to make sure that the firmware is up to date. So as, as always, there's an upgrade, an update needed. So I'll just quickly whiz through that and then we can move on to importing the Shelly device into Home Assistant, the exciting bit. Okay, so what we'll do now is go through importing this new Shelly device into Home Assistant. So as you can see from the screen, it's already detected the new Shelly Plus 2PM. 
So I'm just going to import that into my Home Assistant and I'll select an area which is the garage that I've obviously installed this one into. Uh, I've already got the Shelly integration installed, it's pretty straightforward and um, we just have to go into add integrations and add the Shelly integration. So here you can see in my list we've got the new Shelly Plus 2M, the rest of the devices are all named um, with some, something sensible. So I'm just going to rename this device so we know where it is, so it's easily identifiable. And then I can see that there's one device and 31 entities. So in the device, there's there's some renaming to be done um, to make you understand what these different controls and sensors are doing. Uh, so what I'm going to do is rename the Shelly Plus with garage roller door, so I know where it is, do I want to rename entities, and yes we do, we want them all understandable. So we've still got the control switch zero, and con control, <laughs> control switch one, um, as the up and down, so what I need to do is, by turning these controls on and off, I can obviously see the garage door moving up and down, and I'll be able to work out which switch is controlling the garage door and then go into these entities or devices and rename them appropriately. So you can see in the logbook um, it's working, it's been turned on and off and you could see on the sensors the power and consumption being used as well. So I've identified that that one is bringing the garage door down Therefore, the other one must be, hopefully, um, making the garage door go up. So I'm going to rename those so they're a bit easier to understand what they are in the dashboard. So what I'm going to do now is add that card to my garage room and my Home Assistant dashboard. So if you go into my garage room, then you can now see the garage roller door entities have been added. So I'm just going to move that to where I want it to be seen on my dashboard. And to be honest, I don't use this view uh, on a laptop. I tend to use um, my mobile phone. So these screens look pretty ugly, to be honest, on a, on a laptop, but on my mobile phone, they look much nicer because it's all kind of vertical dashboards. So there you go, up and down. Um, and we've turned off the header toggle. We don't want that there. We just want those those um, in place. And then you can give it a nice icon, something that's appropriate that um, reflects more accurately what the control is doing. So if the garage is open or closed, so I'm just going to add um, change the icon to something a bit nicer. So we can see when the garage door's closed and the garage door's open. One thing I have realized actually is because this is a toggle switch, you've got to turn it on and turn it off. It's not like it turns off automatically when the door's shut or open. You've got to turn the control back off again. Otherwise it starts doing some weird stuff. Um, so it'd be nicer if anybody's got any ideas on a nicer control card with up and down arrows. That would be that would be great, it'd look much nicer. So we can see here the power and energy consumption. So what I need to do now is go through those um, sensors as well and give them more appropriate names so I know what they do. So by either opening or closing the garage door, I can see those sensors being triggered and obviously work out what's, what's doing what and just renaming those appropriately so we can see what they do. Quite a nice feature if you're into your um, home energy monitoring. So it could actually be something that I put into the um, Home Assistant Energy Dashboard as well, just to see how much power that's using. It's not huge amounts by the looks of it, it's only 296 watts there, which isn't too much really. So they're now all renamed and we've got some sensible names for the controls as well. So 
I've been looking at automating opening the garage door and I've come to the conclusion it's not going to work in the way that I want it to but I'll talk you through the automation that I created and I'll explain why and then maybe um, I'll discuss some other ideas on what you could do um, but I think that the conclusion is that although I can automate unlocking my front door at home I'm not necessarily going to do that because there's a potential security risk that the door could accidentally be opened if the automation's triggered incorrectly and obviously that's that's not a good thing. So what I wanted to do was, um, as an example, when my son goes to school or goes out on his bike, he takes the, the, um, the bike out of the garage, the bike has got a tile tracker device um, stuck to the bike so it, I know where the bike is all the time so my idea was that when the bike comes home and enters the home the home zone I could then say okay he's within a few meters open the garage door and he can put his bike away straight away and then um, use his mobile phone to, to close it behind him when he's finished the problem is that the tile tracker doesn't update its location quick enough. So it could be as much as five minutes after he's got home that that's then triggered. So it could be that he's got home, opened the garage door himself, put his bike away, closed the garage door, come into the house, and then the tile may then update its location and then open the garage door and that's that would be a disaster. We wouldn't want that to happen. Um, so the other thing I thought was maybe you could use NFC tags, something like that. So maybe you could scan the NFC tag when you get home and that would open the door. But if you've got your phone in your hand anyway, what's the difference? You might as well just press the button and open it. Um, we're not family that puts our car in the garage because it's just full of bikes and boats and all sorts of other tools and things. Um, but if you do have a garage that you could, you're lucky enough to put your car in at home, then potentially you could you could have an NFC sticker in your car and you could just scan your phone on the sticker when you're kind of driving down the roadway and the, the garage door would open. So that might work quite nicely. Um, so what I'll do is I'll talk you through this automation quickly anyway, because it may be that you've got some other ideas that you can um, use as a trigger. So in my example... My trigger was my son's bike, which is, a, a, as I say, it's a tile tracker. So when that, when Home Assistant or Tile detects that its, it's um, location has changed to home, then this automation would be triggered and the garage roller door would turn on the up motion. So as I said earlier, the annoying thing about this is that it's an on-off button. Um, so you, when you open the garage, you click open, or click up, sorry. Um, and once the garage door's opened all the way up, then you have to press that button again. And I'll try and show you on the screen um, at the same time here. Uh, you have to turn off again. Otherwise, if it's left on and you then try and close it, then it makes the, the garage door jump around a bit. So you have to turn because I guess it's trying to do both things at the same time. So in this scenario, you turn on the up toggle switch, and then I've said wait for a minute. So, well, sorry, 30 seconds I've said. Wait 30 seconds, then once the 30 seconds is, is, is up, I'm assuming the garage door would then be open. I then want to turn that to the off position. Um, so if we go back to um, my room into the garage, so here we've got these toggle switches. So you can toggle it on to open the door and that will open it. But once it's open, it doesn't toggle off again automatically. You have to toggle it off to stop it and then you can, you can do the down action. And I've got my lights actually here. So when that closes, yeah, the lights go off automatically. Um, 
Yeah, so that's that's kind of it really. That's where I've got up to with it. So if you've got any other ideas or suggestions, I've got that disabled this disabled at the moment because I don't want it going off and triggering things. Um, yeah, so now I've got this in Home Assistant. All my kids and my wife have got their own phones with Home Assistant in so they can kind of trigger this themselves and open and close the doors so it's not a big deal I've, I've kind of got where I wanted to and thinking about the security aspects I probably don't want it to um, open automatically certainly not using these tiles but maybe an NFC thing in your a tag in your car if you set that up scan your phone on it as you're coming down the road then I'll open open the garage door um, yes yeah, so that's all I want to talk about there thanks Thanks for watching the video up until this point. Hopefully you found it useful. I've certainly enjoyed making the video and thankfully I've got some way of opening and closing my garage door now without having to find this horrible key fob. Um, within the app on my phone, I've always got my phone with me so I can easily open and close the garage door when I need to. Um, I took you through the installation of the Shelly device into the garage. Um, with regard to your roller door, what you'll need to do is just find your online documentation. I guess most roller doors will have um, some sort of wiring instructions. Uh, if you dig those out, then you'll be able to understand which is the main wires that are feeding your um, motor on the garage door. So you need to understand which one sends the garage door up, which one sends it, sends it back down again, and then you'll be able to easily wire those into the Shelly relay. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, we showed a bit of integration into Home Assistant as well. What I'd really like is a different card with like up and down arrows rather than having the on off buttons or toggles. I, I don't really like that card. So if anybody's got any suggestions on a better card to use that can provide those up and down arrows so it's more visually intuitive for which one's kind of going to open the garage and which one's going to close it, that would be great. Um, also give a bit of a demonstration of an automation that I've set up. So when my son comes home on his bike, um, when the tile device detects that he's at home, then the garage door will open automatically for him and he can put his bike away. Then he can use his phone with Home Assistant on it and he can close the garage door behind him. Uh, if he doesn't close the garage door, then I get a notification so it's been left open. So hopefully the video was useful. Um, I'd love to get some feedback and comments. Um, like the video if it was useful. Subscribe if you'd like to hear more. And hopefully I'll see you in another video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.